It's Friday night. It's the preview show. It's the No Name Never podcast. Hello and welcome to the preview show brought to you by the No Name Never podcast. I'm your host, Natalie Bromley, but joining me is the main man himself, the headliner of the preview show, and that is, of course, Dave Statman Roberts. Dave, hello, how are you? Hello, Natalie, I'm very well. It's uh, good to be back after the international break. Mm, it really is. It feels like it was been quite um, a while since we were last playing, doesn't it? I always, well, I say that, but then it always seems to um, get like jump back at us very, very quickly. You know, like I always feel like we're just about, we started to relax and have a break. All of a sudden, bang, football fixtures are back. And what a good thing that is, Dave, because we miss it. We miss it when it's not there, don't we? We don't like not we having do. games. We, we do. do, very much. Exactly. Well, it's been a couple of weeks since we last spoke to our preview short listeners. And before we kick off this week's episode and we look at what delights we have in store for our wonderful crew, we do, of course, have... A quiz question um, that we need to give some answers to, which was the last one, which is our last preview show, which I think was the Leeds one, wasn't it? Um, And you set our listeners two questions. There was an easier question and a harder question. The first one, the easier question being, which player scored winning goals for Burnley against Leeds United in victories at Turf Moor in both of the recent promotion seasons? So that's 13, 14 and 15, 16. And question number two, which is the harder one of the two, was last season, the matches between the two teams were played behind closed doors. But who were the two managers the last time Leeds United came to Turf Moor for a top flight match in front of a crowd? Dave, what did we have in terms of correct answers then? Well, the correct answers were uh, Scott Arfield was the player who scored the winning goals in Burnley wins over Leeds United at Turf Moor. That was in both our most recent promotion seasons. Um, And the correct answers to the second slightly more difficult question uh, were Jimmy Adamson for Burnley and Jimmy Armfield, the two Jimmies, uh, for a match that took place in September 1975. And in terms of correct responses, we had uh, quite a few who knew part one. Uh, We had a couple of our Pope Master quizzes. We had Andrew Blythe and Adam Dennett. Uh, both knew that. Uh, but once again, the second part was slightly more challenging. Uh, John Robertson knew that it was Scott Arfield for part one. And for the second part, he got Jimmy Armfield right. So we got the Leeds manager, uh, but didn't uh, get Jimmy Adamson. So one and a half points for uh, for John there. Um, uh-huh. And Adrian Caton, uh, another one and a half points because he got Scott Arfield, but knew it was Jimmy Adamson uh, for part two, but couldn't get the Leeds United manager. He, he didn't know it was uh, Jimmy Armfield. But we did have somebody who got all three, uh, and that was uh, Jan Gedzaleski uh, got all three and is our quizzer of the week. So well done to, uh, to Jan. Definitely. Well, well done for everyone who submitted answers. We've got quite a lot this week, so we can't really, um, read everybody's answers out. But well done, guys. Keep uh, keep submitting your answers. I'm liking this new double question format. I think it's uh, it's really good. So uh, stay tuned because at the end of this show, we are, of course, going to be setting you with a new quiz question for this week. So do not go anywhere. Premier League head to head. But turning to the main reason why we are here, Dave, and that is, of course, a preview show because the Clarets are back in action this weekend. We've got to wait this weekend, I'm afraid, for our um, fix of football because Burnley are playing away at Everton. Monday, we're on Monday Night Football, Monday the 13th of September, 8pm, Sky Sports. Dave, let's kick us off with the history of this fixture, please, starting with the Premier League meetings. Yeah, this season we're providing you with the head-to-head record between the clubs in Premier League games, either at home or away, depending on the venue. Uh, Burnley have visited Goodison Park seven times. Uh, That's in all of our previous Premier League seasons since we first earned promotion. Um, And there's yet to be a draw in any of these away trips. There have been two Burnley wins in the Premier League era at Goodison Park, starting in October 2017. 
uh, a memorable Jeff Hendrick goal. He finished off a, a memorable 24 pass move to net the only goal of the game. We all remember that one. Um, and then as recently as March of this year, uh, goals from Chris Wood and Dwight McNeil helped the Clarets to a 2-1 win behind closed doors. That was uh, last season's visit to Goodison. Um, and that leaves five defeats. Uh, two were by a 1-0 scoreline. Uh, another two by a 2-0 scoreline, as well as a 3-1 defeat. That was in April 2017, uh, when our only goal came via a Sam Vokes penalty. So it's two wins and five defeats in our previous Premier League visits to Goodison. And long may opportunities to sandwich young Sam Vokes into this podcast they continue, Dave. Um, what about memory match then, please? What have you picked on for this particular feature? Um, well, yeah, for this season, we're going for one particular memory match for each episode. And as usual, we've selected a past meeting between the two clubs at the same venue as the forthcoming match. Uh, we've already mentioned our two Premier League victories at Goodison Park. We're going to go back in time a little bit further to the 31st of January, 1976. Um, we're first division side back then. Uh, Peter Noble gave Burnley the lead before half time, but Everton replied shortly after the break uh, with a goal from Brian Hamilton. Uh, but further goals from Brian Flynn and Derek Scott in the 73rd and 87th minute put Burnley back in front. And even a late reply from Brian Hamilton with his second goal wasn't able to prevent a Burnley victory. However, this was just one of three away wins in the league during the 1975-76 season. It already cost Jimmy Adamson his job. Joe Brown was uh, manager for the second half of the season, including this match. Um, but the season ultimately ended in relegation for Burnley. Uh, and although no one realised it back then, it will be the start of a 33-year break from top flight football, unfortunately. Wow, that is, that is, God, a 33-year break. How do you ever go back after 33 years? Yeah, well, we did, didn't we? Well, we did, but it's like, you know, you, you think after that amount of time, you forget sometimes it's as long as it was. You just think, God, how did you, how did we ever claw our way back? But anyway, you think, don't you, after that amount of time, it is, you're done, you're always going to be a lower league side, but luckily we didn't. On this day! Um, next up then, Dave, is on this day. What happened on this day in whatever year you picked? Uh, well, we're going back to, to look at all the matches and then picking out some selected ones. So Burnley have played 22 previous matches on the 13th of September, which is the date of Monday's game, and they go all the way back to 1890. Uh, there have been eight Burnley wins on this date. Uh, five of those wins were before World War II, though, uh, and include an emphatic 8-1 win in the league game against Reading at Turf Moor in 1930. Uh, the three post-war wins were a 3-0 top-flight win at home to Middlesbrough in 1947. Uh, we also had a 3-2 away win at Preston, another top-flight game in 1960. Uh, that was early in the season after Burnley became champions of England for the second time. Um, and there was also a 2-1 away win, which um, maybe a few more people will remember. Uh, that was at Nottingham Forest in 2008. Uh, both Burnley goals were scored by Graham Alexander, including one of his trademark penalties. At the most recent time Burnley have played on the September 13th, uh, that was a 0-0 draw in a Premier League match at Crystal Palace in 2014. Uh, Scott Arfield failed to convert from the spot with five minutes remaining, uh, and the match remained goalless, point each. Uh, so although our overall record on 13th of September is played 22, won 8, drawn 7, lost 7, uh, it gets worse as time goes on. So for matches since 1945, uh, we won 3, drawn 7 and lost 5 uh, out of 15 matches. Uh, but in the last 10 games, that's since uh, 1969, uh, Burnley have won just the 1. So there's 4 defeats five draws and one win. That was the one we mentioned against Nottingham Forest in the last 10. So we're hoping for a, a little bit of a reversal of fortunes on uh, on Monday night. Yeah, definitely. Amen to that. Club Connection! Um, what about Club Connection then? You should put a uh, poll out for this, I think, don't you? But uh, I've not seen one, so let's see where you go with this one. Yeah, well, one of the new features for this season's preview show is Club Connection. Uh, we take a look at the players and occasionally managers who spent time at both clubs, uh, with a particular focus on one individual. Uh, firstly, there are a couple of Burnley managers who played for Everton. Harry Potts, who played for Burnley and then later became arguably the club's most successful manager, also spent several seasons in between times as an Everton player. And Burnley player manager from the 1990s, Adrian Heath, was an Everton legend in the 1980s. 
Yeah, definitely. Well, it sounds very much this week like we were spoiled for choice, Dave. And I know, as I mentioned before, you normally run a poll on Twitter to see what, um, well, which of our candidates yeah, our listeners want you to focus on. And I didn't see that this week, so I'm a little bit concerned that you've gone rogue. Um, and obviously, I think you might have just picked this for yourself, Dave. Go on, tell us well, who you've yeah, picked. Well, yeah, there were, there were too many to choose from. I think perhaps we should uh, ask producer Matt to commission a Roberts Goes Rogue jingle. That's <laughs> uh, <laughs> fitting well with the, with the PD show. Oh, well, <laughs> but hopefully... <laughs> Love it. Hopefully I can explain my reasoning. Um, as you might expect, some of the names we saw in our replies when we did uh, put the list out uh, included the likes of Trevor Stephen and Martin Dobson. We did receive a suggestion from uh, Teddy L's dad on Twitter who said, um, a player who was a free transfer at 31 when 30-plus was over the hill, uh, a class above in a team of classy footballers, a pioneer ball-playing left or right fullback in the days of hoof it away. He was underwhelmed at his signing, but he was a fan from literally his first touch. Um, and that player is uh, Keith Newton. Um, he played for Burnley and for Everton, uh, but also started his career as a youth team player at Blackburn Rovers in the late 1950s. This ties in quite well with the... Um, uh, the podcast that uh, Young George put out earlier in the week. We had an interview with uh, a guy who's written a, a book. If you've not listened to that, certainly uh, have a go back and listen. That's uh, looking at the history of the games between uh, Burnley and Blackburn Rovers. And Keith Newton's one of those rare players who's probably considered a legend at both clubs, at mm. Blackburn Rovers and uh, Burnley. Um, but as I say, he uh, started out at Blackburn Rovers as a youth team player uh, before taking the step up to their first team. Uh, and he was already an England international when he joined Everton. Uh, for a fee of around £80,000 in December 1969. Uh, the Toffees won the title that season, and he remained there making 59 appearances until Burnley came calling in the summer of 1972. Uh, he was a free transfer and helped Burnley to the second division title in 1972-73. Uh, he was equally at home playing left-back initially, but later he also played right-back and he also captained the side on several occasions. In all, he played 253 times for Burnley, but eventually hung up his boots in 1978, playing his last match at Brighton in February of that year, as Derek Scott took over the right-back position. Uh, in retirement, he ran a newsagent shop in Blackburn, but sadly, Keith Newton contracted lung cancer and died in 1998 at the age of just 56. Uh, and one of the reasons for choosing Keith Newton this week is that his biography is due to be released later this autumn. So if Burnley books are your thing, then follow Rob Sawyer, uh, that's uh, at Rob Sawyer 70 on Twitter, who is the book's author. I say that book's uh, coming out uh, in a couple of months. Yeah, definitely. Uh, that's, uh, do check that one out because that sounds like it's going to be a fascinating read. I'll definitely look at that myself. Scouting Report! Um, well, that is, of course, sums up our history section of this week's podcast. But of course, we're not going to leave it there, Dave, because we want you to bring us right back up to the present day, kicking off with our Scouting Report. Yes, another new section for this season, kind of pulling together the uh, the lowdown on our opponents, uh, starting with uh, their manager. Um, after previously managing in the Premier League with Liverpool, Chelsea, briefly, and also Newcastle United, uh, 61-year-old Spaniard Rafael Benitez was controversially appointed as the new Everton boss in the summer. Uh, most of that controversy appears to relate to the fact that he used to manage Everton City rivals, Liverpool. But two wins and a draw in the first three league games of this season appear to have dampened down some of the vitriol that came his way, for the time being at least. Um, it looks like he's been favouring a back four so far, with former Claret Michael Keane being partnered with both Mason Holgate and Yerry Mina in the centre so far, uh, flanked by uh, Luca Digne and Seamus Coleman, although the latter is now on the top of his injury list. Um, Alan and Decore have been deployed as defensive midfielders, with attacking options coming from the likes of uh, Rickarlison, uh, Alex Iwobi or Andros Townsend, uh, new signing Damari Gray, and spearheaded by Dominic Calvert-Lewin. They also have the likes of James Rodriguez to call on, although he's yet to play this season due to injury. At last season, Dominic Calvert-Lewin scored 16 non-penalty goals in the Premier League and was also Everton's high score in terms of fantasy Premier League points, but he missed out on the England squad for the recent internationals due to a thigh injury, but may be back in contention for Monday. Uh, the same potentially applies to a few other players, Ben Godfrey, 
Yeri Mina and uh, James Rodriguez. However, Fabian Delph and Seamus Coleman both appear to be ruled out for the time being. Indeed. Well, as well as our thoughts on Monday evening's opponents, we do also like to hear from the other side and opposition view. Um, we are at the time of recording waiting for that to come in, but hopefully we'll have the thoughts of Ian Throwfell for you, which will come in right about now. Opposition view. Hello, my name's Ian and I'm here to give you an Evertonian's take on Monday night's Class with the Clarets at Goodison Park. This summer has been a difficult one for us on the blue half of Merseyside, firstly and most importantly with the loss of our manager Carlo Ancelotti, reportedly for a lower wage too. Then, as we're recovering from that, we replace him with Rafa Benitez, an ex-Liverpool manager who described us during his time there as a small club. To say he wasn't a welcome appointment with the fans is an understatement. A small club, however, is something which he certainly set about trying to do with his transfers this summer. Ancelotti, during his time, brought in a player he'd worked with before in the Colombian Hammers Rodriguez, and Rafa sought to do very much the same by signing his 30-year-old Andros Townsend from Crystal Palace. However, as it turns out, it's not all doom and gloom. We've actually had quite a good start to the season, with some strong results that now leaves us in the European places, along with the smug fact we can all enjoy that we aren't Arsenal. Our young, by Benitez signing standards that is, new signing Damari Gray is actually looking to be a really strong part of our midfield and is certainly one to keep an eye out for on Monday night as he continues to find his feet playing alongside with Charleston. That said, we've struggled with defensive errors, especially with Michael King gifting away goals like Santa at Christmas and a well-disciplined side like yourselves and especially with Chris Wood are really going to make us pay for any mistakes that we make. I expect us to start a pretty similar lineup to the way we did against Brighton although perhaps we might see the return of Hammers Rodriguez, whose future has been uncertain all summer, but he has been seen back in training this week. That said, I only expect him to be on the bench. A start seems highly unlikely. But season fullbacks Luca Digny and Seamus Coleman will be playing down the wings and providing crosses to top scorer Calvert-Lewin, although Burnley's first and England's second choice keeper Nick Pope isn't going to make that easy. Talking of fullbacks, we're going to have to keep your new signing, Maxwell Corner, in check, who is rumoured to be making his debut against us on Monday night. Finally, I also wonder if we might see ex Everton player Aaron Lennon for a period. He hasn't started a game for you this season, but it'd be good to see him. It's going to be a close fought game, but I still see a 2 1 Everton win with Calvert Lewin bagging a heady winner towards the end of the 90 minutes. And then finally, young Dave, who is our referee, please, for Monday's game. Uh, Andre Mariner of Birmingham will have the whistle on Monday evening in Merseyside. Uh, Burnley don't have a brilliant pass record with him in charge. Uh, despite the fact that uh, we won four of his first eight matches, we haven't won any of the last eight. We've lost seven of those and drawn just one. That means we have just four wins out of 16 games in total, with two draws and 10 defeats. Uh, he refereed three Burnley games last season, all of which were in the Premier League. Uh, they were the 1-0 home defeat to Southampton last September, uh, the 1-1 home draw against Arsenal in March, and also our 3-2 defeat at Southampton in April. Uh, I was going to say that he hasn't shown any red cards in his past Burnley games. Uh, my list where I've got all the details and all the cards show just yellows and no reds, but that wouldn't strictly be true, as he did brandish a red card at Eric Peters in the game against Arsenal. That was before the uh, video assistant referee, quite rightly, uh, overturned the decision uh, as the ball had struck his shoulder. Uh, in terms of the video assistant referee for Monday night, that's going to be Kevin Friend. Excellent. Well, I know we're not going to leave it there, Dave, because I know you like to spoil our listeners. So why don't you delve deep into those pockets of yours and let our listeners have the miscellaneous stat of the week? Yeah, this week's stat is likely to be all over social media this weekend and relates to notable milestones for two Burnley players. Uh, we're, we're assuming that both the players in question will be selected to play, although as both have been pivotal to Sean Dyche's game plan in recent seasons, we would expect them both to be automatic selections barring any injuries, which I think we've had the uh, press conference today and nothing's been mentioned. So all being well, they're both going to be uh, in the starting eleven on Monday. Uh, first up, Dwight McNeil uh, made his 99th Premier League appearance against Leeds. That was before the international break, which means that his next Premier League appearance will be his 100th. And let's remember he's only 21 and there aren't too many players who've uh, reached that milestone at such a young age. That's a, a really fantastic achievement for uh, for Dwight McNeil, fingers crossed. Yeah. Um, and secondly, 
After 10 years at the club and playing his 11th season for us, Captain Ben Mee has now reached 199 Premier League appearances, wow. meaning that his next game, again, hopefully on Monday, will be his 200th in the top flight. Uh, Dwight me. McNeil's attacking prowess and Ben Mee's reliability and defensive solidity typify Burnley's relentless attitude. And hopefully we can celebrate their milestone matches on Monday, along with a positive result. Fingers crossed. Well, how are you feeling about the game on Monday, Dave? Obviously, we've only got one point on the board so far this season, albeit performances haven't really been that bad. I think certainly against Leeds, we played very well as well. We're quite unlucky to, to end up coming away with only a point there. Um, but it's going to be a tough, tough game on Monday night. I'm not, I'm not looking forward to it, I won't lie. It certainly is going to be tough. I think um, it's going to be a different proposition to uh, last season. We obviously got the victory there uh, behind closed doors. I think a full Goodison, it can be quite a, an intimidating atmosphere when the crowd get behind the, the team. It can make a lot of noise in that uh, that stadium. Um, and it's going to be, yeah, a really tough game. They've got off to a, a decent start, two wins and a draw. So going there is never easy. Um, with them being on a, a decent run, it's going to make it uh, doubly difficult, I think. Yeah, it really is. Um, that said, though, you know, we should be buoyed by some better performances and we should really be quite carefree going away on Monday night because we're not expected to win. Um, if we, anything we get from that is probably a bonus. So do you think that can play in our favour? You know, if we get an early game, an early, an early game, an early goal dip, I think we could probably find ourselves pulling a result out here, you know. I'm feeling like we can do this. Um, I think we go into every game with the attitude that, yes, we can win it. Um, we, we've, In some ways, we've struggled more at home than we have away, whether that will continue through uh, this season. Hopefully, we do get some uh, positive results coming at home, but try and keep some of that momentum away from home. We had uh, six wins away from Turf Moor last season. If we could match that again um, and start getting a, a run of results at Turf Moor, then we can get ourselves um, going up the table. We've obviously got some um, good news as well in terms of some new bodies through the door, some new uh, mm. potential players to um, knock on the door of, uh, of Sean Dyche and, and, and try and get in there and, and show what they're capable of. Um, so, you know, th there are a few more options we have now than we had uh, at the start of the season. We, we made a few signings towards the uh, end of the transfer window, whereas the previous transfer windows, we, we saw very little activity. We have at least uh, reached out there this season and, um, and and got some more options, which we needed to do, but um, we need to get in there and make sure that those players can uh, can hit the ground running, I think. Yeah. going to give me a score prediction then, Dave? Well, I'm not going to predict a defeat, so I'm going to go for a 1-1 draw. Of course, which means you think we're going to lose, because that's what you always do. <laughs> Who's going to score for us, Dave? <laughs> um, uh, Chris Wood. Oh, excellent. And uh, I'm going to go for... Give the header. Excellent. I'm going to go for a 2 2. I think we'll win 2 2. I think we won't win 2 2. Win two, two. Because that's, that's not a thing. Uh, we're going to draw 2 2. And I'm going to predict um, also Chris Wood, but I'm also going to say Ben Lee header because I always do. And I'm going to keep saying it until it comes true. Um, well, listeners, let us know what you think the score will be on Monday night, please. We want a prediction from you. We want the scorer. And we want to know how he's going to score. Is that going to be left peg, right peg? Backside, I don't really care, but tell me how you think it's going to go in. Is it going to go in from a set piece? Is it going to be from open play? I love to know how you think all of our goals are going to go in. Fantasy Premier League update. Okay, Dave, let's move on. We've talked about the game, but of course, we now want to talk about what everybody's here for, and that is, of course, the much loved and highly coveted known and never fantasy Premier League. Um, we like every week to give you the latest updates from the league section, let you know who the movers and shakers are and how. The early, the in the moment, the early stages, how our early leaders are looking. Um, this season has been incredible. We've we've closed the entrance now. That's it. We're done. You can't get into our league. Too many game weeks have passed, um, and there's been a record entry of well over 320 teams for this season. Everyone's trying their best to use their football knowledge. Maybe a bit of luck in pursuit of that coveted title, but. Well done for everybody who's, who's taken part this year. I can't wait to see who ends up our winner at the end of the season. Um, and with that in mind, Dave, even though it is early days, we've now completed game week three. So you should have an update for us, I presume. Uh, I do, yeah. Some patterns are beginning to emerge already. Uh, but we do have uh, some early front runners in the league. And they are as follows. I'm going to read out the names of the top six. We've got in sixth place, uh, Jack Toner with 257. 
Uh, also on 257 cumulative points to date is uh, Michael Westbrook. Uh, we've got our very own Adam Dennett in fourth place on 259 points. Uh, Joe Elliott is in third on 269. Uh, we've then got Deck Clark in second place on 272. And the leader is uh, Andrew Smith, who has just a uh, one-point lead at the top with 273. And Game Week 3 also marked the end of August, uh, which means that Andrew Smith is also the first no-near-never manager of the month for this season. Yeah. Uh, and as well as the regular FPL updates, we'll be giving a shout-out to the manager of the month uh, each month, provided I uh, remember. Oh, you know, <laughs> I might try and see if we can delve into our... Um... Prize it's got to be worth a sticker, it. hasn't it? It's got to be worth a sticker, yeah. I'm never going to get these stickers any other way. I might do that. Andrew Smith, if you are listening, please send me, drop me an email with your contact details, please, and I'm going to send you out a sticker to be our first. In fact, I'm going to. I'm just going to say that that's what we're going to do. This month, for the 10 months of this, um, what's it called, this season, every single manager of the month. Hang on a minute, Dave, how are you going to do this? Is this the most improved player of the week, the one who's got the most points. No, it's just, just the points for the calendar month. Yeah, so whoever's got the most points for the calendar month wins the non and ever manager of the month. And you're going to get a sticker. So, Andrew, please send me your contact details and I will get that post out to you. Um, now, what about non and ever team? Dave, how are we all doing? Yeah, we do have that separate mini league just for the No Near Never podcasters. And uh, Adam, who came so close last season to the overall title, leads the way amongst us podcasters at this early stage. I can confirm uh, that our last update must have just been a blip, as your Dingle Bells team, Natalie, uh, is no longer ahead of my Burnley Stats team. No! Uh, and I've also leapfrogged producer Matt into second place. So I had a, a decent week in game week All three. Right. Let's hope uh, that Whatever. continues. But I'm, I'm a long, long way behind Adam already. Of course, we are. we're all a long, long way behind um, Adam. Well, actually, um, hang fire. In fact, now is probably a good way to... I know we were going to do this later, but let's slot this in now. Um, because um, Adam is busy tonight. We were going to get him on the preview show to speak to you, but he's got something on. So we've asked him to send us a little bit of a strategy section, just a little bit of a recording, just to see what you should be doing at this stage of the season, heading into the next, um, into September for September's um, points. And I'm going to slot that in right after this one. Now, he actually did send me an email saying, Natalie, here's how you can be um, doing better and keeping above Dave, which doesn't seem to have happened, but I, I didn't take his advice. But it basically, he sent me a, a, an email that had three points in it. Number one, Please stop making Lacazette your captain. Done. Number two, make anybody else your captain. Okay, done. Number three, please can you just transfer Lacazette out and put literally anybody else in his place. Okay, done. And then I kept for some reason putting Antonio from West Ham on the bench. And he was like, will you please stop keeping him as your third choice to sub because he's getting loads of points and put him in your team. So I hadn't done all of those things. And if it doesn't work this week and I don't go above Dave, then... You're going to suck no, it. Advice is rubbish. But Liz says I'm going to slot in right now at this point Adam's little strategy update. So here you go. Hello, listeners. Adam Dennett here, talking all things FPL. Uh, what is a pivotal time in the season with the first international break? I'm going to be going through the players of the season so far, uh, then team structures, transfers, and wildcard options, and then a few FPL basics that have served me well so far in uh, in previous seasons. So the Players of the season so far, there's been a standout, Mikel Antonio. Um, I'm glad I've been on him from the start. And if you haven't got him by now, I think uh, you really need to be considering it. Uh, the other uh, best performing forwards so far have been Gabriel Jesus and Dominic Calvert-Lewin. Uh, midfield is where all the premium, op- premium options were at the start of the season. Sour, the top scorer with 30 points, and then Greenwood, Ben Rama, Torres, and Fernandez all scoring well in the first three weeks. Uh, the defensive players, which are all very low ownership, uh, Hugo Lloris, Regulon from Spurs as well, Pontus Janssen, and Marcus Alonso, who's been a great asset in years gone by, but wasn't really considered by many FPL players at the start of this season. Uh, As I mentioned, many of the high-scoring players so far have been the mid- to high-priced midfielders, and they they did seem the best options beforehand. But the additions of Lukaku and Ronaldo, and then the um, reintroduction of Harry Kane at Spurs, I'm going to discuss if it's time to make wholesale changes to your team, 
and maybe even use that first wildcard chip. Over 1.5 million managers have already transferred in CR7 uh, this week. Um, it is a very tempting option. Uh, the two viable ways to, to really do this are to play your wild card, which allows you unlimited transfers this week. But I'd only recommend doing this if you have a lot of players uh, that are out of form or injured in your current side. Uh, you need to be making four or five changes to your team for a wild card to be worthwhile. Uh, if you are playing uh, your wild card or making transfers this week, just be aware of the Brazil situation. Um, the FIFA and the Brazilian FA uh, are attempting to ban um, the players that stayed at home um, on the FA advice for the next five days, which would rule them out of the next Premier League game. Uh, this affects Edison and Jesus from Manchester City, Alisson, Fabinho and Firmino from Liverpool, Rafinha from Leeds, who I was planning on bringing in this week, but won't be doing any more, and then Fred and Thiago Silva. Um, so another way to get Ronaldo into your team is to make two or three transfers. Uh, not many players will be able to bring Ronaldo in with one transfer um, because there's not many teams with a premium forward. Uh, so the best way to do this is probably to downgrade a premium midfielder to give you the funds required. Uh, probably Salah or Fernandez, who are very popular choices. Uh, good options to downgrade to at the moment, uh, mid-price midfielders who are offering really good value. Uh, Jota, especially because there's been news breaking today that Firmino's out injured for the next few weeks, so he should um, have a place secured in the Liverpool front line. Uh, and they've got a, re a reasonable run of fixtures coming up. Uh, Adama Traore at Wolves, very good run of fixtures. He always seems to flatter to deceive, but he had, has actually looked pretty sharp at the start of this season. And then Ferran Torres at Man City, playing false nine and on fire at the moment, but you are at risk of uh, pep roulette with that one. Um, I'll just go on to a few basics that uh, always serve me well. Uh, so I'll always make sure I'm aware of the upcoming fixture difficulties of all the teams and not transfer in players uh, that have got difficult runs coming up and try and target players that do have a good run of games. Um, I'll make a, uh, make a captaincy matrix over the next six to eight weeks, decide who you'd, who you'd want to captain in the entire game over that period, and that helps plan which premium players you want in your squad. Uh, and plan when to bring those in and make changes. An example of this is if you take the three premium forwards, Lukaku, Kane and Ronaldo, in the next run of games, if you bring Lukaku in from game week seven, you get Southampton, Brentford, Norwich, Newcastle, Burnley, and you're then swapping for Kane, you get Leeds, Burnley, Brentford, Norwich, and then you swap in for Ronaldo, and you get Norwich, Brentford, Brighton, Newcastle, Burnley. Um, so you can really have some really good captaincy options for a lot of weeks that will take you into the mid part of the season. Um, if you're happy with your team, uh, don't make a transfer for the sake of it. You can be much more flexible with two transfers the following week um, and it gives you more information to use. Be patient when you can, that feeds into that. You've bought a player for a reason. Don't overreact if uh, if they if they blank in one or two fixtures. Um, give them at least three or four before taking them out. And try and um, wait until Thursday or Friday before bringing um, bringing players into into your team because there's always news conferences around them, and you you get all the latest injury news. So if you can hold off, then um, then try and wait until after that. Um, like I again, I'm planning on bringing in Dominic Calvert Lewin this week, um, and he's an injury doubt, so I'm going to wait till the Everton press conference to decide whether I bring him in or not. Uh, don't throw your chips away. Like I've already mentioned, wild card's probably your most powerful chip. You only get it twice a season, unlimited transfers. You only really want to be using that when you really need to. Um, then you have bench boost, which is always good to use in a double game week towards the end of the season. Uh, to maximise the amount of players playing. Triple captain the same in a double game week, but um, 
you don't have to use that in a big double game week. You can target if one of the premium players has a good um, good double fixture, even if it's isolated. And then free hit, um, ideally in a blank game week, they normally fall around the FA Cup latter stages. Um, so just be aware of when the FA Cup fixtures are and when you'd want to plan uh, to do that. It allows you unlimited transfers for one week only, then your team reverts back to how it was uh, previously. Uh, most of all, enjoy the game. Um, and if none of that made sense, then just bring uh, Maxwell Corney in and give him the captain's armband. Up the Clarets. Good stuff. Right, Dave, Who team of the week then? Who are the players that our managers should have included in their team for game week three? Uh, yeah, game week three, uh, it looks like it was a 3-4-3 formation for the high-scoring players. And if you're interested in those, who those players are, uh, we had uh, De Gea, Manchester United, in goal. We had a back three of uh, Varane, Coleman and Regulon. Uh, we had a midfield four of uh, Torres, Gallagher, Buendia and uh, Son. And our front three were uh, Gabriel Jesus, uh, Jamie Vardy and uh, that man you just mentioned, Mikel Antonio of West Ham United, who's uh, a lot better being in your 11 rather than your uh, third substitute. Yeah, definitely. Um, could we, do we, what did we decide what we were going to do about calculating whether the managers could get all of those in your... I think that's a bit of a boring feature. I'm going to calm that on your side. I keep wondering whether or not you could actually physically get all of those managers in your team, but I think it's... Uh, I'm bored of that now, so I'm going to move on. Um, well, we're going to have another Premier League update in our n- next preview show, which is, of course, going to be next week. And we're going to be looking ahead um, to the next Premier League match against Arsenal at Turf Moor. So keep those tactics going. Listen to what Adam says to you. And you never know, we might have a new leader by this time next week, Dave, which would be very, very exciting. So good luck, all managers out there. Statman Dave's quiz question. And finally, Dave, we're going to leave our listeners with another quiz question. Again, in two parts. So, take it away, Dave. What do you need our listeners to look at this week? Uh, Well, we're looking for the names of two players this week. It's a one single question with two answers. One is, I think, easier than the other. Um, So, the question is, much has been made of our excellent disciplinary record, with Burnley recently surpassing Ipswich Town's record of the most Premier League games without a red card, and the fact that no Burnley player has been sent off in a home Premier League game to date. However, there have been seven red cards shown to Burnley players in away Premier League games, and two of those were against Everton at Goodison Park. But can you name both players who saw red? Ooh, exciting, exciting. And then what about... Um, oh, no, of course, I just... I went into default mode then. I thought you were going to go into an easy and a hard question, but you've, you've gone the other way around. That is, one. that is one question. Well, tell our listeners how... And you see, you're throwing me, Dave. I'm getting all confused. I'm that used to you being consistent with your answers and you've, you've thrown me. Um... Tell our listeners how to submit that question, please. Uh, yeah, you can tweet us or preferably send a direct message on Twitter. That means that no one else sees your answer. Uh, that's at no Near never on Twitter. Uh, you can email us to the dedicated preview show email address. That is preview show at no Near never dot net. Or you can also reply to the post for this preview show on either the No Near Never Facebook page or on YouTube. And we will reveal both names uh, as correct answers at the start of the next preview show. We certainly will. What about any other business then, Dave, before we wrap up and let our listeners get on with their weekends? What um, what do we need to... Any fixture changes, any community news, etc., cetera, etc.? Cetera? Uh, I think the only thing to add that's new from last time is a confirmation of um, the League Cup uh, fixture. We now know that we, we've we been drawn against Rochdale in the last 32, and we know that uh, that match is now taking place at Turf Moor. It's on Tuesday the 21st of September uh, and should be a good opportunity for us to reach the last 16. Let's see if we can finally have um, a cup run. Yeah, that would be that would be really, really good. Well, that is all we have time for then, this preview short listeners. It's good to be back after the break. Um, we are looking forward to another weekend of Premier League football. Uh, but my thanks in the meantime go to everybody who has contributed to get this 
preview show up and running. Of course, to our opposition view, to Turf, Turf Moor Stadium announced Dominic Walker for his specially recorded preview show announcements. To producer Matt, who always has the joy of knitting this together when we do things like record out of sync with opposition view. So thank you very much, Matt. Um, and of course, my final thanks to Dave Roberts for all of his hard work in getting this show together. It's all his own work does it all for the love of the club and I just find it fascinating every week to see what it comes up with. So thank you, Dave. Um, last but not least, least, of course, you, the listeners, for downloading and listening to this episode. Your support is very much appreciated and we would not be here without you. Um, the rest of the team will be back on Tuesday with the analysis show, looking what at what happened on that game on Monday night against Everton and hopefully talking about three points, maybe some appearances by some new players. That would be very exciting. And then Dave and I will be back next Friday night, as usual, for the preview show. Looking forward to that home tie against Arsenal. If you've got any questions, comments, anything you want us to look at in the meantime, you know how to get in touch with us. Uh, but in the meantime, do take care. This has been the preview show brought to you by the Known and Never podcast. Until next time.